Welcome back, Everyday Business Leaders. I'm Melanie Ake, the host for your show today, coming to you from JP the Geek Studio right here in Greenwood, Indiana. Remember to subscribe to our channel and turn those notifications on so you never miss an episode. Today, we have another exciting segment in store, again, for business innovation and inspirational leaders. Bo Jackson, thank you for joining us in the studio. Thank you for having me. This Appreciate is it. really pretty cool that you're here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> really, when we talk about business leaders, you and I got to sit down. I call it coffee pots, but it's mm. actually fresh pots. It is, yes. <laughs> I love fresh pots, don't you? Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. yeah, I'm biased, though, because they're my neighbors. So. Oh, well, okay. Well, there A little you biased. go. But well, yeah. um, I love it because I've seen you everywhere in Johnson County. Like everywhere, everywhere I go, there you are. Mm. And we reconnected again at the Greenwood alumni. They were doing uh, the senior projects. And so here That's we right. sit next to each other and I'm like, we really need to have coffee. So, Cheers. so we're yeah. having coffee again. Yes. And we're going to talk about all things leadership today. You have had an amazing journey and people that have not met you yet need to know who you are. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you say so. Happy to meet them. Yes. Yeah. Well, when I think about leadership, it's about being self self assured, secure, knowing who you are, knowing what you like. And when you really shared your heart with me, I thought, oh my gosh, there are so many people that are missing this little like leverage of self confidence that they're holding back, and they're a lot. They're really afraid, especially today's January the second. Right. Sure. So it's a new year. And that's really fearful for a lot of people because they don't know what they should be doing. Yeah. So I want you to talk to us about, you know, when you were young and you started learning all these different things, I would say a mastery level. <laughs> but what are the a couple of things that you dove into young to give yourself confidence? Sure. Um, yeah, I think like most most folks when they're young, they get a lot from their parents. You know, so I think that's a huge piece of it. Uh, and I was very fortunate and blessed that my parents were extremely active in the community, right? Um, they were pretty much on every board you could be a part of. Also, side note, I'm from a very small rural community. So I graduated like 60 kids. 60? Yeah. So very small. There's only like 300, right, in our entire high school. Wow. So in that type of an environment, um, your impact is pretty dramatic, mm -hmm. right? So if you do anything in that, in that community people feel it, um, rather quickly. Uh, so, so yeah, we, uh, my parents were involved in everything and that gave us kind of the example that if we wanted to see something that was different or maybe not offered, um, they gave us the example on how to get that done. Mm -hmm. And that plays a lot in the leadership, mm -hmm. right? Um, how to create it. Yeah. Right. Where do you start and how do you get consistent with it? I think in a small community, Greenwood's not that small anymore. When I mm. graduated, Mm -hmm. we had 160 <laughs> in my graduating class. So there you go. 160 something. But here's the thing, right? It's what you do with what you have. It's your strengths to what you have and not comparing yourself sure. to other people or other processes, but maybe creating things that haven't existed before. Yeah. Uh, but you've taken it and you've learned a lot of different, I would say trades, tools of the trade, sure. because you were able to gain this kind of security, like, I don't really need to worry about, let's say not go out and make money, mm -hmm. but I want to be secure with who I am. So, so you have this confidence that yeah. comes through. There's a lot of it that you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, you know, I had a, uh, growing up a decent amount of success in, in changing things and doing certain things. Right. Again, uh, tip of the hat to my parents. And so when you take an environment where you're a big fish in a small pond, that kind of gives you, some might say a false sense of security, but it gives you security nonetheless. And so when, when I went to IU, I didn't know any different. Like you just don't know any different. And I would say that that's always been the, um, I don't know, the playbook that I've aspired to mm -hmm. is that, hey, I'm going to give it a shot uh, and see what happens. Um, you know, worst they can say is no, right? Um, but yeah, why not? Mm -hmm. especially if things don't exist right now. Like I think, you know, what we had discussed um, a little bit at the coffee shop was the, the soccer program, mm -hmm. right? And 
that was a lot of fun. And I learned a lot of lessons uh, on if, if something's not here and you want it to be here, what are the steps you have to go through in order to have it come to fruition? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, because you can't, you can make things happen, but you also want to make them sustainable, right? Um, but the obstacles, yeah. right? I think that's what people forget is like for people that have mentors or you have this great network of family that say that those are who inspired me. That's great. People that don't have that, or even they may have that, yet they don't have this inner drive to say when things don't go well, right? When things don't go well. So that's what I want to get into your head today about is – those times when you have to make a decision and say, you know, maybe I would have done things differently or what I learned was mm. this was big, maybe failing forward. Yeah. Uh, it's a big thing for the first of the year for people to get and embrace and say, hey, everybody's been there and everybody's yeah. done it. Yeah. Um, I think, you, you know, you kind of nailed don't don't compare yourself is a huge one um, for sure. You know, I, I don't I'm trying to think of where the source comes from and, and it's really difficult in the sense that what do you have to lose right guess what there's going to be another january that's going to come around mm -hmm. if we're lucky right if we're fortunate there'll be another january that comes around and we get another shot at it uh or another first of a month you get another shot of it mm -hmm. um all of the things that the obstacles that you're speaking of i think we create those on our own mm -hmm. so we can also figure out ways to overcome them right self-fulfilling puzzles mm -hmm. if you will or problems and fortunately you know i think like most humans, we're good at problem solving, right? So if we really um, try to, if we try right? to, yeah. So Ryan Leak has this this whole segment that he talks about with chasing failure, mm, yeah. And I think about you a lot of this when I'm studying his material because I have a workshop coming up pretty soon. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, and so he has this idea like, what's the biggest dream that you could have, and then how would you go after it? Right. And what if you couldn't fail? Right. What if what if there was a way that you couldn't fail? And he talks about um, in the John Maxwell conference, you know, his his opportunity with Kobe Bryant. Yeah. And so as he was meeting him, it was the whole conversation of what am I going to say to Kobe Bryant? How yeah. should I dress? You know, that's comparison gap, like you said. But when he had that opportunity, he decided that he needed to do something big and maybe be a part of the NBA. Mm -hmm. So he talks about his journey in his documentary with the Phoenix Suns and how he got that part through but it was one thing that inspired him to do those next things to take bigger risk. For sure. And um, talk to us about that because your mind thinks that way too. Yeah. Oh, see, here's the deal. Like, um, you know, when I went through my master's program, there was a, an, an, an opportunity to where I was learning about as a master in organizational leadership. And the, one of the topics were different types of business models mm -hmm. and uh, co-ops. And I was reading about co-ops. I'm like, oh, these principles are amazing. Why aren't there co-ops? Why aren't there more co-ops? Um, and then there was wisne, wi women, women <clears throat> sorry, Joe. Um, <laughs> and then there's like women in the industry, mm -hmm. right? Why aren't there more women in executive roles? And so y we have this class and it's going around. And I've always been the type of person that pokes and prods and asks questions that sometimes are, um, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Some would say that I'm naive. Uh, others would say that I'm a bit stubborn probably both right uh but you know i was working at rei at a time fabulous company awesome company um and one of the things when i got hired on they said that it's a flat organization you can call up anybody you want to whenever you want to and you'd be happy to talk to them and so sally jewel was the president of the company at that point in time she eventually became a cabinet member um as a secretary of the interior and i said you know what i'm just going to email her mm -hmm. and we'll see if she won't give our class 30 minutes somebody that has been there, done that, uh, at arguably one of the highest levels, both, um, a female as an executive and running a co-op mm -hmm. in a, I could argue male dominated, right. REI recreational equipment incorporated. Um, and, uh, sure enough, she responded and she got on the docket and she got on a zoom call. Maybe it was Skype. It might've been Skype. Cause I don't think zoom was <laughs> that big back then. Um, but she got on a Skype call and she gave us 30 minutes of her time. And, the women in my class absolutely loved it mm -hmm. because they got to interact with somebody like we're talking right now mm -hmm. via Skype, ask her a bunch of questions. Um, I prepped her obviously a little bit, uh, but I, I, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't ask, um, I don't know what that inner voice is. Cause I, I'm trying to, you're making me reflect on this because <laughs> it's one of those where if you feel nudged move, right? If you feel like there's something there move, I will say it has, or it was much easier 
when I was single, mm. right? Um, before getting married and having children. Because There's the consequences, now, right? absolutely, the mm-hmm. consequences, the things that I would never think about, like you mentioned, am I going to make enough money? How are my benefits packages? What do they look like in this new career? Um, I was very much that if I wanted to learn something, might as well get paid doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can meet a lot of awesome people along the way. And so that led me to jobs at Starbucks, REI, Chipotle, Honeybee Farming, right? Mm-hmm. You name it. And it was fascinating. But then when you enter in somebody else's life, now it's, uh, it's not just about you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that sometimes, you know, if, if I'm fortunate enough to call myself a leader, I think that's something that we can get caught up and forget about at times, especially with home life. Maybe not so much with the people that, you know, we're charged to take care of. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think sometimes at home that can get a little, a little dicey. And then you bring in two littles and it's like, oh my gosh, well, <laughs> whew, all right. Well, if I'm going to make this move, if I'm going to push or follow this nudge, now I'm actually thinking about what are the, what are the consequences, mm-hmm. um, which I never really had until my mid thirties, mm-hmm. so to speak. But it's uh, a big trade off, right? So when you're experiencing is. those transitions, it's like, what did I know before? Mm. So people that didn't have that confidence in their teens and twenties mm-hmm. going into their thirties, starting those families, it's like, how do you coach somebody, right? Yeah. How do you mentor somebody to kind of get that yeah. if they've never experienced that yet? Yeah. Like it's not hard to catch up. You just have to put the right mindset in place. Yeah. Be curious. Yeah. Right. That's a huge one. Like I, I mean, yeah, we get, we sat together. We know of each other, <laughs> but we find our Venn diagram finally crossed over. Right. Exactly. Uh, come the capstone projects. But yeah, I mean, being curious and what's the worst thing that can happen? What's to be the fair? worst thing that can what happen? What is the worst thing that can happen? I have to challenge you because today's January the 2nd. Oh my and gosh. So, um, I you know, I like to bring my daily reader out from John Maxwell because, you know, he's got right. great leadership lessons. Bring it on. But today, so I want you to reflect on this. So he talks about the instrument of leadership. Hmm. And I know you're in the Johnson County, um, Leadership Johnson County right yes, now. Yes, I am. And so if you were thinking about this and you had a project on the instrument of leadership, so here's, here's your question. Um, if you lead your team... It says, give yourself these standards to live by as you communicate to your people. So how would you tell someone to learn how to do this better? So here's the the three things. Be consistent. Nothing frustrates team members more than leaders who can't make up their minds. (laughs) One of the things that won the team over um, at Continental was the consistency of communication employees always knew what they could depend on when he said it. Mm. So that's the first one, consistency. The second one is be clear. Your team cannot execute if members don't know what you want, right? So don't dazzle them um, with your intelligence. Impress people with your straightforwardness. So being consistent and being clear. And the last one is being courteous. Mm. So being courteous, everyone deserves to be shown respect no matter the position or the kind of history you have with them, right? So meeting people where they are. Um, Being courteous to your people, you set the tone for the entire organization. Hmm. It's a great tip on leadership, isn't it? So if you had a project to integrate this into leadership, Johnson County even, right, on communication. So be consistent, be clear, and be courteous. How do you think if we train on these types of principles mm-hmm. that that can really impact our community? Yeah. Um, you may jump in. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm also reflecting on where I fall short, which mm-hmm. is, you know, I think a good process. A little, a little it's humbling. Training, yeah, right? You didn't humbling. know this podcast was training. <laughs> what do we got in this coffee? Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I would say that, you know, your, your core values. So consistency comes out of core values. Right. And so if you can establish those core values, um, that's going to come out in your communication, Mm -hmm. you know? So I, I think that, and and they can be different depending upon who you're leading, depending upon what business you're running. Mm -hmm. Um, but establishing them and being well to articulate them because, you know, if I said, um, discipline, okay, well that could mean something very different to somebody in the military, Right versus one of my buddies in Colorado, mm-hmm. for lack of better terms. Um, so I think core values, 
will be the first part with the consistency because that then is your guidebook. If you can act and behave in line with your thoughts that are guided by your core values, mm -hmm. then absolutely. Um, the second one was... Be clear. Be clear. Oh, that's a tough <laughs> one. That's now, a tough now one. Now, you've just hired somebody. You have an assistant. Yes. And we talked about this a lot. And I love this theory because it's not really a theory. It's just a mindset, again, mm -hmm. of you can do everything better yourself than you can with someone else. And mm -hmm. if you give somebody else the opportunity to grow, mm -hmm. you grow. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. being clear with the expectations. So talk about this one. Yeah. So um, be, being clear, uh, that's, that's a, such a hard one. In that specific example, so I'm very fortunate in that if you're not a very good clear communicator, find one. Right. So that's another piece too. So if you're not, if you get jumbled up, which I do often and have a lot of ideas and my mind goes 5 million miles an hour, um, then find somebody that can help you articulate what thoughts are important, prioritize, and then get them out in accordance with your core values. So the example that I think you're, you're talking to is, um, my administrative assistant, also fraternal coordinator. She wears multiple hats and she always has. Um, she's absolutely amazing. Uh, Michelle, uh, when we first got together and I offered this role up to her a little over two and a half years ago, I said, um, this is the, this is the criteria. Would love to have you help me. She had helped me out a little bit before. And she said, that's great. Uh, I want to help you, but here's my passion. She outlined for me what she wanted for her career, mm -hmm. which was to work in the nonprofit sector. Um, she didn't know which organization she wanted to work for. And she's been hounded quite a bit since but she didn't know what organization to work for and so she just let me know that um i my heart is in the nonprofit world and eventually i want to work for that organization i said hey that's great um we are fraternal and it's actually 50 percent of my job is to go out in the community and work with nonprofit organizations so here I'll, I'll cut you a deal um you uh you take this opportunity on and you help me out for as long as you I uh, feel led to, and hopefully in the in that interim, you will be able to find the nonprofit organization that suits you. Mm -hmm. So it's a win-win. Um, you get to help me back with our communication, being very clear. You get to help me with the prioritization and the running of my, my district. And in return, you're going to be able to walk with lots of different nonprofit organizations, get to meet amazing people, um, and try to narrow down where you're most passionate. And then... If you leave, it'll be bittersweet. <laughs> but it's like, I'm hiring you to let you go. But right? then you have a framework, right? Absolutely. So that's sure. the thing. I think if you start to practice these, and sometimes it's hard, right? A lot of times it's hard because there are things that come up that you go, mm, should I say that? How mm -hmm. can I say it? But I think you earn that trust with that person when you start to step into those roles. And it, it, um, it really does make a difference in yeah. the relationship. I think clarity comes, you know, I spoke, you know, getting somebody to speak clearly, but I think you get more clarity by actions and behaviors, right? So we talked about consistency. Um, if you set the core values, people can talk, especially this, unfortunately, this mm -hmm. day and age, right? We, AI can pretty much sound like you, talk like you, walk like you, whatever. Um, Until somebody meets you and then they're like, wait. That's right. Wait. That's right. It's like, hold on. Wait, that's not what you said. I do not think this means what you think it means. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think that when your behaviors and your actions align, right, that also sets a very clear picture um, for folks to follow. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, clarity. So the third one is being courteous. Yeah. Why not? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Always having that smile on your face, but really responding to that other person's needs. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing that I think we as a society can improve on right now. <laughs> Be kind. Yeah. Right. People are back out on the road after COVID and they don't even know how to drive anymore. <laughs> you're not wrong. Like, holy cow, you're not wrong. I know. Hi, this is Melanie Ake. When you visit EverydayLeaders.com, you'll find valuable resources to become a better leader in your life. Women's leadership programs, including Top Floor Women, our monthly networking events, corporate workshops, and strategic business coaching services. Discover classes and products to develop yourself, including our morning leadership devotionals. Don't forget, order one of my inspirational books, sign up for classes, or pick up some gear in the Leader Store. Listen to the Everyday Business Leaders podcast, apply to be a guest in our studio, or even sponsor your own commercial advertisement. 
Contact us today at everydayleaders.com. Cow, you're not wrong. <laughs> I know. Well, what does that mean from a business leader standpoint? Just being courteous every single day. I think that, and this is something that, and so I've never had a role like I have right now. And what I mean by that is it's very corporate. We're a fraternal um, and it is relatively flat, but there are numbers to hit, right? And so we can talk about how much we love helping people, but we also have to do our job, right? And so I think that when it comes to being courteous in that type of an environment, you, if you've done number one and number two, mm-hmm. number three is easy because people know you. And so if you've set a precedence to where you're consistent in your actions and your behaviors and they align with your core values, um, and then that is clearly communicated, right, through your behaviors and your, your words, then when it's really hard, because leaders have to make a lot of hard choices and it's not fun, mm. one of my first roles running an organization was, I say first, but I would argue like third or fourth was letting the entire team go. And it was very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, But because of who I was and who they knew me to be, it didn't make it easier, but they understood. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that even in those situations, the courteous doesn't happen there. It happened way before, right? Uh, I would put an asterisk next to that, not to... John (laughs) Maxwell's got it down, so (laughs) not going to get in there. But But you know, it's in the top three because it's it's included people right? know you care right that would be the other c is that if you're if you're courteous that's an expression that you care mm-hmm. and so if you if you care then people will um respond to you perceive you as being courteous and in order for people to know that you care again you have to have been clear mm-hmm. and you have to have what was the first one again? consistent thank you <laughs> Yeah, that is. Had to break up the tension a little bit. <laughs> no, but here's the thing, right? People don't care how much you know. It's true. Until they know how much you care. That's Absolutely. like the classic quote from many leaders. And I think today what I'd like for you to kind of message into that is how do we create that environment in our community? Because there's a lot of people doing amazing things, economic development and here in the chamber. Mm-hmm. Like we are trying to build business community like never before Mm -hmm. and being in part of leadership Johnson County, like you see these projects that people say we can do better, right? That's what's so inspiring about our community is we've got so many resources and there's many people trying to do the same thing. Just how do we collaborate to drive that impact? Uh, I think that's, what's really important for us to think about in 2024. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the care aspect, again, it's, it's, it's difficult. You know, one of the, hardest things in in the role that I'm in right now, when your livelihood is dependent upon your clients, right? And somebody that never, um, as a coach, never really had to, I don't say worry about money, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, I just, it'll come Mm -hmm. faith, right? It'll, it'll Mm -hmm. work itself out. Do right uh, by the community, the community would do right by you. And, um, what I, what I realized is that people are more skeptical right? Why do you care? Mm -hmm. And maybe that is a question that didn't get asked as much Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, 40 years ago. But now it's, you know, we're getting into this and it's unfortunate because it's the climate that we're in is, is why do you care about the community or why do you care? One of the, um, I I gave back to my old elementary school Mm -hmm. when I took on this role because that's what we're charged to do. Right. And I got super excited. It's like, Oh, you know, one of my high school buddies was a superintendent, which bless his heart. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so I reached out to him and said, Hey, you know, I'm going to come into town. I would love to help out. Tell me what you need. And he's like, well, our library needs an update in iPads and technology, et cetera. And I said, well, I had a matching fundraiser. Do you think you can raise $2,500? He goes, well, that's funny that you mentioned it. We did about 2,800 last year. I was like, all right, done. Uh, how would you like to double that? And he's like, that sounds amazing. And so that I drove down there and I walk in his office. He's like, so what's the catch? Uh-huh. Why do you care so much? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, I'm from here. I'd never been, again, I never had been attacked or not attacked, but approached, confronted right. with mm-hmm. that question because to make money was never in the values, equation. Right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause money was never in the equation mm-hmm. with regards to, oh, well now my job, right. Um, is commission. So that question, oh, you're a financial representative. Mm-hmm. Why do you, why do you care now? 
it's been 20 years. Why do you care now? It's like, well, I have the funds, first of all. Mm-hmm. Didn't have them back then. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have the opportunity to give back. And second, it's like, look, that, that is our business model. We are a fraternal. Um, and that's our way that we market ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so there is no expectation. I'm going to give it to somebody. Um, you know, if you are thinking about retirement planning and things like that, it'd be great that you think of me. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, guess what? Here's the check, mm-hmm. you know, um, so I think that, you know, motivation behind the care to kind of wrap that up is that that's what people probably think about. And it's very difficult in the community. Like, that's why LJC is awesome. That's why, you know, like this podcast is awesome because in LJC, just like you get to have these conversations with individuals, you get to meet on that level. Mm-hmm. And so you can very quickly peel back the layers as to why do you care? Right. Because people are consistent. Mm-hmm. Right. And clear. Um, so yeah I, well i love that because when you know when you bring up the whole like are you motivated to do something because of a financial gain mm. so many people through covid and and even today right it's yeah. the social media craze that if you're not in a business showing up on social media mm-hmm. then you don't care about me if you're not showing me your kids and your dog and your heartache then you don't really care about getting to know me mm. and i think there's this whole um i don't it's a change in mindset definitely but I don't think you always have to do that. I think not every day, right? right. People say, I'm going to spend or hire a social media manager to be able to show people our, our layers mm-hmm. <laughs> so that they will know, like, and trust us. But I think there's also this core of people that have always known you. They don't need AI to tell them who yeah. Bo Jackson is, yeah. right? And so when you're reaching out to communities, I think – I think our society makes people skeptical until they say, oh, you really have a heart to serve. Mm -hmm. That goes back to the servant leadership. And when people know your story and they know why you care so much, I think that starts to really build, um, build the future for it. Yeah. I know that, um, Brene Brown, great author, right. Um, great speaker as well. You know, she talks a lot about vulnerability and, that's kind of the the layers that people will trust those that are more vulnerable. So we know what in the world. You know, it's funny. I hope he's really. I said vulnerability, and the lights went out. I know. I know. Brene Brown, Brene Brown, Brene I know. Brown. I know. Got it. I know. I know. I know. I wonder why that's doing that. Because it's just a cheap light. No, but. It didn't start that until the, the new year. <laughs> <laughs> Said, Happy New Year. I quit. <laughs> it didn't do that earlier. I know. It did it after. Let's see. Let's just go. We'll have to. Brene Brown. Brene Brown. Oh, Brene Brown. 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 And okay. I'll catch One, two, three. Are we still recording? Three, two, one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, yeah, like Brene Brown, right? Great author, great speaker. When you talk about peeling those layers back, um, she speaks of vulnerability, right? And oh, I was like, I don't see it on the screen. <laughs> I, because we we're not supposed to talk side. about vulnerability. <laughs> like, no, we're not going to shine any light on this topic. I love it. Puns for I days. Know. Puns for days. What in the world? Classic. I don't know. That is so weird. When you turn the light off, that went off. It's not connected. There's no oh, other. Oh, and we're back. There we go. I hit a button by mistake. Okay. I panicked when that light went out. But wait, are we still recording? So I'm going to start on. Uh, you got to put that in the blooper reel. Vulnerability and the lights go out and then the cameras go out. Oh, we're, we're, I know. We're recording every bit of this. Good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, Brene Brown. Brene Brown, three, two, one. Yeah, so, I mean, you take authors like Brene Brown, right, speakers, and she's amazing. Um, And she speaks of peeling back those layers and vulnerability. And I think that folks, this day and age, that's, it's being used as a factor as to figuring out what your motivations are. And the more vulnerable you are, right, that is perceived as the more genuine, Mm -hmm. right? Um, You're more open to connect. And I think that's 100% true, without a doubt. That being said, as a leader, we're tasked with making very hard decisions and carrying ourselves in a certain way. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't be vulnerable. It doesn't mean that we're not human. 
but there's also time and place set and setting, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's a big key. And so to your point, whether we're posting our daily woes mm-hmm. on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or X or whatever other social media platforms mm-hmm. out there, that's not really an indicator. To me, that's a, it's a stage, right? No matter how we want to look at it mm-hmm. and you can be vulnerable for folks. And I think that's good. Um, but there also is a sense of responsibility when it comes to leadership of mm-hmm. knowing set and setting. And then if, people require you to be vulnerable every single day <laughs> on your Facebook account. That's called a reality TV show. Right. At that point. Right. Um, it's more about the vulnerability mm-hmm. and less about who you are as a person and whether you're genuine. So are you ready to be vulnerable? Oh my gosh. That's why the Kleenex <laughs> box is here. <laughs> I know. Turn the cameras back off. So I have this game that I love to start. This is where I kicked off the new year. Oh boy. Actually, I did it in the show for 2023. Which was just a few days ago. <laughs> I'm like got sweaty palms over okay. here looking at that box. So this is um, this is called Food for Thought. I don't get paid to uh, talk about this. But anyway, it's a place that we went, a restaurant on vacation. Okay. And they had all these really famous leaders in the world. And they had all these quotes all around the restaurant. That and, sounds amazing. And stuff. And so I was like, oh, they have a they have a box of cards? So I love things like this. And a lot of times I'll use John Maxwell's, but... There's a, a lot of variety. I'm, gonna reg- I'm excited right so, now, but I'm going to regret okay, every minute so, of it. So I only give you half of the deck, but I'm going to just okay. pick a card. Pick bow. a card, any card. All right, let's see here. We'll go with <laughs> this one right here. Uh, okay. You want to read it? You can read it. Yeah. You can even own. read, read it, read, too. Read, read your own, yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> I feel like Johnny Carson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can already play my, uh, my parent self out right now. <laughs> As a father, why do you think anger can be dangerous? Is there any instances where anger does something positive? I did not see that one coming. Um, The quote is, anger is just one letter short of danger. And it's anonymous. Fitting. Why do you think anger can be dangerous? I think that um, psychology would tell me that we have triggers, right? And, And I think one of the keys to knowing who you are knowing yourself is understanding your triggers. And I think anger can either set the trigger or pull the trigger. And it has the ability of making us unconscious about our actions. And that could be words that could be, um, movement behavior, whatever it looks like. But once that plays in, we're not who we are. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we, I don't want to say lose control, that's a cliche, but that's where I believe anger can be dangerous. Um, I also think, I'm going to add another dangerous, is the, back to courteous, if we're angry at ourselves, you know, one of the things we talked about was being courteous to, you know, the people that we're charged with leading. But you also got to be courteous to yourself. You also got to be clear to yourself and you also have to have that consistency to yourself, mm. right? So, I think the anger can also be extremely detrimental, probably even more detrimental because we don't actually see those, um, you know, the outcomes, the consequences until it's too late. If, if we're so angry with ourselves, Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that's a, something that worth looking into now let's go to the positive route, right? (laughs) Is there any instances where anger does something positive? Absolutely. I think that how we handle our emotions and how we redirect because anger, my definition, I, I firmly believe anger is that, that, that pent up energy, right? And energy we express through emotions or we can through emotions. And so anger is just one of those on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. And so if we, you know, it, it takes a lot, at least for me, it takes a lot of energy to get angry. So if I can refocus that, like if people can refocus that anger into something productive mm-hmm. um, with a clear mind, right? I think that could be extremely beneficial. You know, uh, the example that we talked about earlier, so uh, I mentioned the Fresh Pots um, that they didn't have a soccer team in my community. We played soccer from the time we were like three or four, the whole community, right? Not just, you know, me or anything, but like everybody played soccer. Mm-hmm. Uh, rec soccer was huge. But then when you came into middle school, there was no soccer team and we didn't have football. You had the, the normal, I would say, um, traditional American sports, right? And so people were angry, right? Hey, our kids have been playing this for so long and now they don't get to do this anymore, even though they have arguably many years of experience, many reps and a lot of passion and love for the game. So now what are they going to do? So what are we going to do? Right. And so there was a lot of anger and 
what's the uh i don't know if this is politically correct or not but the the pitchforks and torches got out right and and my parents and a lot of the other parents went to the school board and so we, we need to change this and that's that's where again thinking about how do you make change and how do you do those things i got to witness that process mm-hmm. that allowed us pretty much every year to add on another grade to the soccer program and that came out of anger mm-hmm. right that didn't come out of I don't know, rainbows and butterflies, everything's groovy, everything's great. Everything gets along, all the board That's agrees, right. like the community needed something. That's right. This is solving a problem. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I think anger is that, that result of something's not working. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do we address it? Mm-hmm. Right. Can we fix it? Yes, no. What does it look like? Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely instances where anger can do something positive. Um, how, it's just energy. How do we use it? How do we use it as a fuel? You you had a similar experience. Softball. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, right? So Exactly. Uh, we connect there. Yeah. I mean, we just kind of said at Greenwood, like, we don't have a team and everybody wanted to play softball. So let's go get 100 names yeah. on a petition and let's find a coach. And that's what we did so many years ago. Let's see. Next year, it'll be 40 years ago that we did that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all right. I'm doing the math in my head. I'm like, okay, well, how old was I? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That was 28 years ago. That is like, yeah, it's so true, right? 27 years ago. So the impact that you make though, because you do something that maybe nobody else wants to do or that they're just not willing to stand up and do, but it takes the courage to do that and to listen. Right. Yeah. It's Um, hard. I want to talk to you about how this makes a difference in what you're doing today. Yeah. um, As a financial planner, because all of the things that we've talked about, like bringing it full circle, mm. right? Being able to to know how to lead other people through yeah. something that a lot of people get angry about because when they took a look at their financial plan, they go, I'm not where I want to be. I can't ever start it. It's too late to do anything. But I want you to speak into like what you've learned in the last few years doing what you're doing now to help people realize that it's compounding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? No pun intended. <laughs> so it is compounding. Well played. <laughs> so you really have to, you have to figure out what makes sense for you, but that's why what you do, like, don't be afraid to reach out to someone like you. Right. To figure out what your mess looks like. Cause you can't fix it until mm-hmm. you figure it out. Yeah. Um, I think that there's a reason why we have experts, right? So everybody should have, <clears throat> everybody should have a fitness uh, personal trainer. Um, somebody they can go to dietitian, doctor, lawyer, financial planning is no different. Business coach is no different. Um, I think that the, you know, the opportunity, if we can put what we think is going on in our heads aside and start the conversation, that's one of the things I love about my job Mm -hmm. is that I prompt, this also might be a little bit of the challenge for me a little bit, but I, I get to prompt a lot of conversations for folks to discuss things that they know they should be talking about, but they don't for whatever reason, life, right? Um, and what is it? somebody told me once? Uh, she worked at a bank, okay, and she said everybody thinks everybody else has money. She said I worked at a bank for ten years. There's nobody that has any money. What are you talking about? Don't think that you're the only one, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that if people can get that in their head, um, just showing up. When um, I used to run a gym, people would not become members. After going through the process, they said that they would need to go get in shape first mm. before they would join. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, that's what we're here for, <laughs> <laughs> is to get you in shape, right? And so I think from when you talk about financial planning, it can be very angry. Mm-hmm. Money's practical. Everybody has to deal with it. Not a lot of people, I would argue, the majority of people don't like their situation that they're in because it can be very restrictive, um, resources limited, where they see, especially the state with marketing and social media, right? Mm-hmm. They can see all these things that other people <clears throat> may be getting. <clears throat> Maybe getting Excuse for me. free or partnerships with, and they think that they have achieved that. Yeah. And it's it's really fearful, yeah. right? Lifestyles, mm-hmm. right? Oh, they must have tons of money because look at what they're able to do. They're going on vacation or they're doing this and this. And it's like, well, we don't have anything. It's like, well, hold on. That doesn't mean everybody's responsible. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and... I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole on generational wealth, but a lot of those things are already predetermined in most ways. Mm -hmm. They just are. Um, I know that the, if I'm going to say it luxuries, but the fortunate situation, the blessed situation that that my wife and I are in, that didn't 
happened because we were great stewards in high school Mm -hmm. or college or because we got taught something in school that nobody else got taught. It was because, you know, we had grandparents that were very um, frugal, that um, did things, I don't want to say the right way, but were great stewards Mm -hmm. of their money. And so we're reaping the benefits of that down the road. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you meet with a financial planner, we don't go near as deep as that, by the way. Um, but we talk about those things. We talk about everything, the what ifs, right? Nobody has to talk about those. Um, he'll probably never watch this, so I can say <laughs> it. I got to see my dad tear up just a little bit on the what ifs. Uh, and I think those are important. Um, we get to talk about, you know, we get to throw it all on the table. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, I'm a financial advisor, but I'm also a psychiatrist, right? I have a couch in my office with pillows <laughs> because... Not that everybody has to go through that, mm-hmm. but you know, it should be a comfort environment, comfortable environment where people can share, say, Hey, look, this is where I'm at. This is where I've been. This is where I really, 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 really would like to get mm-hmm. to. And, um, here is my spouse and we want to get there together and we'd like to take our kids with us. Um, and it's just going through the, the longer we wait, the more layers we have to peel back, mm-hmm. the more we, work we have to do. Like stacking up dishes in the kitchen, right? If we're not going to wash the dishes, <laughs> they're only going to stack up. <laughs> that's right. But yeah. everybody's situation is different. And I True. think that's what I wanted to to really highlight with you is because of the mindset that you've had. It's not the everyday financial planner. It's, I really get it. Like you've tried a lot of different things. Yeah. So you've been able to put yeah. yourself in in different leadership positions now having the family, being a part of the community like you are, learning something new again, but also saying, I can be a resource and now I have an opportunity to use what I've learned and give back. So encouraging people, like finding the few dollars Mm -hmm. every month to put back so that you can, even even personally, right, you can start your own legacy fund. There's so much that people can do that they don't think about until they sit down and be challenged with it. So that's my why challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so I love to bring people in here to say, well, what can we do to help you? Yeah. Like, what are the things that we can do as a community to help Bo Jackson and, and your clients yeah. for Modern Woodman? What's your ask today? What is my ask? Um, it'd be, a, I guess it'd be say to be courteous, consistent and clear. No, um, <laughs> my why, you know, or, or my ask, that's probably better because we don't got time for the why. I would say that my ask is um, do your best do your best not to compare. Show up. I think is huge, right? Just show up. And whether that be with, you know, our company or whether it be in any other company, right? Go sit down and talk to somebody about if you're not happy, especially if you're not happy, right? Here's anger. Boom. Especially if you're not happy, go find it in yourself to have a conversation. We do it in every other area. Mm-hmm. All right, fitness, psychological, emotional. We do it in doctor. We do it in every other area. You know, financial advising, they're, they're, everybody can think of a, uh, this is, sounds awful, but everybody can think of a bad situation, right? As somebody that has worked in the industry now for four years, it's one of those where there's a lot of intricacies. And when you talk about being clear, sometimes what happened didn't actually happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but nobody ever knows because right. it's not clearly communicated. Mm-hmm. And there are also a lot of really good financial planners and advisors out there. Mm-hmm. There's a ton of them. So just show up would be my ask. And learn, right? And learn. Yeah. Be curious. Um, put, put, it's not about you, right? It is, but it is not. You show up. It's about how do you get to somewhere else or about your kids mm-hmm. or about your spouse mm-hmm. or your goals or your aspirations. Kind of set the, the pride aside a little bit, mm-hmm. I think. Love that. Yeah, just show up. I love that. That's a, that's a great way to just bring in this whole vulnerability, right? So if you can show up, if you can just take that step this year, mm-hmm. it's the second day of the year. This will be shared probably in the first week. So mm-hmm. I want I want people to take action on this. This is my my call to order to serve the community is like, what are we going to learn? Mm. What can we take away? What yeah. can we change? How can we get better? So. Yeah. I appreciate you just sharing today. Yeah. This was this was really fun. If you and don't show up, you're not going to get any of those. <laughs> if you don't show up, 
we have, can I, can I do a quick plug? Yes. So it's not, no, well, I shouldn't, if I make it out there then. Um, <laughs> so LJC. Yeah. I'm in a, a, a group of other community leaders, other professionals, and they're amazing. Um, and we're working on our project, which I know you're familiar with the projects. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're hoping to, don't quote us on this, but we're hoping to in this April. This is recorded. You know? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh yeah, you are quoting me on this. Literally, there'll be a transcript. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, but our uh, stretch goal, our stretch project, is that we would like to, or we are going to, there's no we would, we are going to um, honor and celebrate our nonprofit leaders in the community of Johnson County uh, at their, hopefully, first annual um, awards banquet and gala event. Wow. Um, and what that looks like, I had the, um, I had the honor of, cause we do a lot of, we do a lot of charity events. Right. And so I invited a, um, nonprofit leader and she was an executive director for a very well-known nonprofit in this area. And she was with her husband and she looked over at me and she said, Oh my gosh, this is what this feels like. And I said, well, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, I have no idea what you're talking about. She's like, I've never been in this seat before. I said, you're going to have to get, what do you mean? She goes, well, I'm always running these events. Mm -hmm. I'm covered in stains. I am worried about my sponsors getting recognized. I'm worried about the food being cold, hot, showing up on time. I'm worried about the venue, the sound, um, and uh, all this prep. And then it happens. And then all of the post stuff that needs to happen. Like I never actually have the opportunity to enjoy anything that I actually do. And she's like, but here sitting in this table with my husband, having drinks, enjoying a dinner, this feels really good. Mm-hmm. It feels really nice. And so that's what I kind of propose to our group. And they're like, absolutely, let's do it. It's like, can we create that table, right? Can we bring those executive directors, presidents, we're still working out the invite list, right? Mm-hmm. Can we bring these people to the table for a night for themselves mm-hmm. so that for one night they can take their you know hat off and enjoy a drink, have their, you know, friend, family, spouses, those loved Being ones with them. Being planned by somebody else. Being ran and planned by somebody else mm-hmm. that would also help network and connect them with other folks that are probably looking for the same things that they are. Mm-hmm. Um, bring in some people that they need to know, that they need to see, that they need to meet and have a great relationship with. And, you know, also benefit them with resources. Mm-hmm. while still honoring and celebrating them. That's our goal. Wow. Um, and, uh, we are well into the planning phase and I, you know, put into the home office and say, Hey, we need a lot of money. Can you send that this way? Mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Never hurts to ask. Well, right? will you come back and share with us what happens? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, for sure. That, for sure. Awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> That'll leave the door open for like, okay, share with us how that worked. Yeah. And then what the next steps are. Yeah. I would love to share that. We're a team of eight, so I can't take full credit. We're a team of eight. Um, um but bring yeah. Bring them in. Ooh. Yeah. You might get half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll that's see. okay. No, I love that. And thanks for sharing that. Yeah. It's, that's really cool. Those are the things that people don't know about when we peel back those layers and say, what's really happening mm-hmm. in your day-to-day life? Yeah. Right? How's that making an impact? So if anybody out there is interested, hit us up. There you go. If you want to help this become a reality, we would love to have you on board. That's pretty awesome. So. That's pretty awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for coming in today. And uh, Thanks for yeah, having me. Let's, uh, Cheers. Cheers. It's been great. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, sure. goodness. All right. So thank you for tuning in today. This has been an awesome episode with Bo Jackson. We are really excited about the things that are happening in the community. And again, Modern Woodman is a place to go if you're even considering looking at your financial portfolio. Bo's a great guy. <laughs> Remember, the journey of innovation and growth never ends. And it's our mission here to keep bringing you the best insights from our local community. So stay tuned for more episodes filled with wisdom, innovation, and inspiration. This is Melanie Ake signing off from JP the Geek Studio, where better IT service is just a call away. They say own it, secure it, and protect it. Until next time, don't forget, subscribe to our channel. Turn those notifications on so you never miss an episode. Everyday Leaders helps you to develop strategies to become a better leader in your life. So remember, it's not what you do in a day. It's what you do every day that makes the most impact. Thanks for joining and Happy New Year. 